Welcome to this verification webinar. In this webinar, we'll go over how to complete the verification report. The verification report is also called the USDA 742 report. So you'll log into web applications and then you'll click on applications at the top of the screen and then select verification report. In the first section, you will report the total number of schools and the total number of students enrolled as of the last operating day in October. So the important thing to look at on the verification report is to look at what date you're reporting this information. So on section one, you're looking at the last operating day in October. So in column A, you'll report the number of schools, and in column B, you'll report the number of students. So it asks about your total schools and then also any residential child care institutions or RCCIs. In section two, you only fill this out if you're operating in an alternative provision, such as provision two, provision three, or CEP, and you'll report the number of schools and the number of students participating in those provisions. And this you'll report as of the last operating day in October. Section three is where you will report the directly certified students. In section, in question 3-2, you'll report your SNAP students. So students directly certified through S Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. So all your directly certified SNAP students will be reported in section, in question 3-2. And this is as of the last operating day in October. Then question 3-3, is where you'll report TANF, Homeless, Runaway, Head Start, Documented Foster, and Non-Applicant Approved by Local Officials. Those will get reported in Question 3-3. Section 4 is where you'll report all the free and reduced price students who are eligible based on an application. In 4-1, you will report those that are categorically free eligible, so those based on um, an application that had a case number for SNAP or TANF. In 4-2, you'll report those that are free eligible based on income. And then in 4-3, you'll report those approved as reduced based on income. So in section four, you'll report the number of applications in column A and the number of students in column B. You just have to be very careful of what date you're reporting because the number of applications in column A, you report those approved as of October 1st. However, the number of students in column B, you report those as of the last operating day in October. So if you had um, students show up on the direct certification list between those dates or you had students qualify or turn in an application to receive benefits, then there will be differences in um, the, the numbers you're reporting. So for example, if you had, um, say you only had two applications that had case numbers on them and each had one student on them. So you had two applications um, and two students as of October 1st, but say one of those students was directly certified on October 15th. Well, as October 1st, the number of applications, you had two. But then the number of students as of the last operating day, since one of them was directly certified, they'll get reported in section three and not here, you'll have two applications but you'll only have one student. And so the report will actually give you a warning asking why you have more um, 
why you have more applications than you have students, and you'll just put in the comments that you had students show up on the direct cert list in, in between those dates in October. The same thing if you had um, students that applied with an application, you, if the number of applications you reported is the number you had on October 1st, but if you had more students apply in the middle of October, you wouldn't count their applications, but you would count them toward the number of students. So it's a little confusing, so make sure you're watching the dates on there. These T1 and T2, this totals up your total number of free and reduced students. So that T1 includes your um, directly certified as well as those certified with application. And then the T2 um, is your reduced students. Those numbers should be comparable to your October claim. Since these numbers are coming from October, they should match up pretty well with your October claim. If they're not matching up with your claim, then there's something wrong either with what you were reporting in your claim or there's something wrong with what you're reporting here. Um, one thing to be careful about is if you do have directly certified students, um, make sure that you do not report them as having an application. So if they filled out an application and they were directly certified, do not list them as application, only list them as directly certified. So make sure you're not double reporting those students. Um, but if you do have some um, differences between your October claim and what you're um, showing here, if it's significantly different, Please um, try and figure out if it's numbers in your claim are wrong, those eligible for free or reduced in your claim are wrong, or if your verification report is wrong. Um, you can call us to um, try and help you figure that out too um, if you'd like. But if you see that discrepancy, please try and fix it. Otherwise, we'll call you and um, ask you to fix it. So section five is where you'll report information on the verification process. In 5-2, you'll check if you completed verification by November 15th. If you didn't, you'll need to upload a corrective action report stating why you didn't get it completed in time and what you're planning to do so you'll get it done in time the next year. In 5-3, you'll report which verification process you used, standard, alternate one, or alternate two. Remember not to check standard unless you chose all error-prone applications. So some people see that standard and think, oh, that's the normal one, but actually most LEAs choose alternate one. So um, only choose standard if you really did the standard method where you were selecting from error-prone. In 5-4, you'll record the total number of error-prone applications if you um, select a standard or alternate two. If you select alternate one, that will actually gray out for you. In 5-5, you'll report the number of applications you verified. This will automatically fill in for you with the number that it calculates that you should have verified based on the numbers you entered in the report. So if that number does not match what you verified, either you entered your numbers in the report wrong or you didn't verify the right number. If you can't figure out which it is, please give us a call and we can help try and figure that out for you so you can verify the correct number of applications. 5-6, you will check if you did not conduct direct verification. So if you did not go directly to In 5-7, you'll enter the number of applications that were directly verified. So if 5-6 is not checked, um, then you must complete 5-7. So the majority do not do direct verification, and so the majority usually will need to check that 5-6 box. 5-8 is where you report the results of the verification. 
So if a household responded and if there was a change or no change, you'll enter the number of applications and the students in the column they belong. So for example, column A is applications that were categorically free as eligible, so those case number applications. And then if they responded and didn't change, if they responded and changed to reduced, if they responded and changed to paid, or if they did not respond, you'll report the applications here and the students here. Then column B is free based on income, and column C is reduced, which of course is based on income. For applications verified for cause, you enter those into VC1 down here. Do, and then you also will con include those results of verification for cause in section 5-8. So that is how to complete the verification report if you have questions or when you're completing that report if you have questions, feel free to contact me or contact your nutrition program specialist.